It is time for spring sports amid renewed concern about sports safety. Joining us in the studio for our Your Health segment tonight, Dr. Eugenio Rocksmith, attending physician at the University of Maryland Rehabilitation and Orthopedic Institute, also assistant professor at the University of Maryland School of Medicine, Department of Neurology, and John Belosky, director of outreach at the University of Maryland Sports Medicine. Also, John coordinates trainers at high schools in Howard and Baltimore counties. Thanks to both of you for being with us. Thanks yes, for having thank, us. Thank you. When, when we think about sports injuries, there's so much focus on football in, in the fall, but a lot of spring sports, John, you, you see injuries as well. Absolutely. Um, I think probably one of the sports we're seeing a great number of those in now is a sport of lax or lacrosse. As we used to call it lacrosse. Yes, yes well, we call it lax now. It's a shorter <laughs> version. But yes, there, there are quite a few. Uh, it seems as that equipment gets better and the athletes are getting larger and faster and stronger, we're seeing greater impact levels. And certainly um, we're starting to see a lot of the same problems we see in football. Namely concussions? I mean, Namely it's concussions. Certainly the, uh, the boys lacrosse, they're wearing helmets. Helmets, I, I think there's a, there's a false safety there. Um, and, and I'll let the doctor speak to that. But I will tell you that the brain floats within a liquid medium inside the skull. And no matter what you have on your head, that brain is still moving. So as you're hitting with greater Im impacts, uh, with greater accelerations, you're getting a lot more movement of that brain inside the skull. And consequently, we're seeing a lot more concussions. Doctor, you were telling me before that the, the latest guidelines that, that came out just last year for this represented a huge change from, from the previous guidelines. Yes, some, the previous guidelines date back to 1997, where they took a, a pretty systematic approach in how to decide whether or not a patient should, go, should return to play, how long they should wait before they return to play, based on the severity of their symptoms. And uh, basically that was the same for all players. But now the, the new guidelines that came out in 2013 uh, and developed by the American Academy of Neurology base every player's return to play on the field on an individual basis. Where do you see uh, the most concussions in, in spring sports? I mean, off the top of my head, I would look at soccer more than lacrosse, ba baseball certainly. Baseball, you, Where do you see patients coming in? Uh, we see patients lacrosse, baseball. We see, like you said, soccer. Uh, more often, you can see uh, injuries, brain injuries, in or concussions in girls playing basketball. That's one of the more common causes in, in women who are who are involved in sports. What, what typically happens there? I think probably when they collide with other players. Okay. Also, cheerleading. That's another activity in which you can see which is a big setup for, for concussions in young women. There was a hearing on this on, on Capitol Hill uh, just last week, uh, looking at, at some of the changes that have taken place. Where's the room for improvement? Where, where do you think things might change if we look out a further few years? Well, I think there, there are changes that are already take, taking place uh, within the state of Maryland. I think nationwide, there's a lot more attention being spent now on education, not only of the athlete, but also of the parent, also the school administrators, as well as coaches. Um, that can go a long way in terms of how we can manage those problems, prevent them from actually happening. Also at the uh, referees level, uh, so the implementation of new rules that, that uh, kind of slow down, control the game somewhat, if you will, uh, will certainly make, make a change also. So I think there's a lot in that terms of education and being able to prevent problems. Would you say uh, that, that there was a time when maybe concussions weren't taken as seriously as, as we take it now? Definitely. Definitely there was a time. And I think because there was a lack of knowledge about really what happens in a concussion and what happens in recurrent concussions, and now that we're starting to see evidence of uh, the long-term effects of recurrent concussions in professional athletes like football players, uh, we're starting to realize that, you know, it's really important to start way back in the, in the player's career from the time they were children 
and teach them how to uh, what the what the warning signs are for a uh, concussion, and also to teach the staff that's that's uh, overseeing their play on the field about what are the warning signs, so you can really minimize the the number of of concussions that these that these athletes uh, incur. Because research has shown that the more frequently you develop a concussion, and especially one after another, the more likely you are you are to have a bad outcome. Let me, uh, let me remind our viewers, if you have a question about sports medicine, uh, concussions in particular, give us a call. We'll have the number up on the screen. You can also tweet a question to at MPT News. That's our Twitter address, at MPT News. What, what should parents know? How, how do you know if, if uh, your child... Uh, was at a game, was in a practice, came home, uh, maybe reports uh, getting a hit and, and isn't feeling quite right. Uh, you know, clearly something that wasn't severe enough to get looked at during the game. Do these things show up later? Well, basically, parents have to know that if, if their kids or the kids' coaches report that the child has been involved in some type of injury where they may have sustained a concussion, the parents have to know to look for certain warning signs such as headache, uh, Recurrent nausea, vomiting, uh, dizziness, uh, for forgetfulness, changes in mood. All these things can be signs of, of uh, having s sustained a recent concussion. Now, what's important is that when the kids ultimately return back to play, if they do any activity which increases their heart rate and their blood pressure that, that causes those symptoms to recur, the child should be pulled out immediately. They should not be allowed to play until they are able to to play the game again at a sustained heart rate and blood pressure without feeling any symptoms. So that's the test. I hadn't heard that before, that, that, that the elevated blood pressure and, and pulse uh, tests the brain in some way? Well, test, test the brain, test the body. Basically, it's, it's a sign that if you're, not, if you're not feeling well after a concussion and these symptoms are reproduced by your going back into playing the game, then you really need to be pulled out again. What is, it, what is it about recurrent concussions that, that's a problem? Well, the problem is that, that basically your brain needs time to heal after the first concussion because there, there may not be any structural changes, that, like there may not be any damage to the brain per se, but there are very, very, uh, very, very microscopic changes that can occur changes in the, the blood flow throughout your brain, changes in the, uh, the uh, elasticity of different parts of your brain. And if you sustain a second impact soon after that first impact that caused a concussion, the, the outcome can be much worse. It's called, it actually has a, a name for it. It's called second impact syndrome. And what are your thoughts on, on the, uh, the long-term effects, especially in football players, of a career of maybe there wasn't a, a catastrophic hit, but, but the compounding effects of a lot of little hits? We have a lot of evidence, as, uh, as we've heard on the news many times, about this, uh, this new disease called chronic traumatic encephalopathy. And this is a result of recurrent brain injuries or recurrent concussions in professional football players or professional athletes or even amateur athletes, where eventually you start to see degeneration in the brain that is very similar to the type of degeneration you see in patients who have Alzheimer's disease. Let's take a phone call. This is Andre in Wicomico County. Andre, thanks for calling. Go ahead. What is the timeline for an injury once a kid sustains an injury? How long should he be out before he's allowed to come back and play? Thanks for the call. Is, is there an easy answer to that? There, there is a kind of... A Easy answer out there, but once again, I think it all depends upon the athlete. Each ind individual is an individual case, but normally what you like to see is a 24 to 48 hour time period where you then come back and do another assessment to see if there are symptoms present. And if there are symptoms present, those which, which we've already talked about, then that's something then that requires further e medical e evaluation. And I'd like to add one thing, and that's yeah. that it's very important that uh, that the, the viewers know that children take much longer than adults to recover Absolutely. from a brain injury, from a concussion. A concussion is a mild traumatic brain injury. Children take much longer, and you really have to be very, very mm -hmm. careful in uh, allowing them and when you allow them to go back into play. What's the cutoff there? I mean, it, when, when you say children, are we talking little kids, teens? Under 12. Yeah, under 12. Okay. 
Uh, let's take another call. Uh, Baltimore City, Leroy, uh, thank you for calling. Go ahead. My question is, is there a limit as is there a limit as to how many concussions that a person should be able to endure before they are actually become concussion prone and not be able to play any particular sport? Yeah, thank you very much. I, I, I would say that we, we use a rule of thumb of, of if you've had three in a year, that's it. You are done. No questions and asked. And that, that rule of thumb makes sense because after one concussion, you have a much higher risk of sustaining a second concussion from a, a less, less forceful impact. And every successive concussion you have after that, your risk goes even, even higher. Is there some point where you're just done as, a, as an athlete and, you know, you need to switch to golf? You need to play golf or, <laughs> yeah, yeah. To play <laughs> golf or ping pong or something. I, I think once you start to see persistent personality changes or persistent cognitive changes at that point, you know, somebody needs to step in and say, you should not be playing anymore. Is there any evidence that uh, you talked about the, the differences between young people and, and adults, uh, between boys and girls? Is there any, any difference you've seen? There is a difference in that, that girl, younger women, younger, especially children, uh, do not have the strong musculature that, that some, some boys have. And so that, that makes them a little more prone to, to sustaining a concussion from the same type of impact as compared to a boy. What about the idea that, that, that I've heard before, and you talked uh, earlier about how the brain sort of floats around in there, that it's not necessarily, I mean, certainly the impact is bad, but a twisting impact is, is worse. There's something about the, the, the friction if, if there's rotation involved. Does well, that make sense? That, yeah, it mm-hmm. does make sense, and that, that's, a very, that's a very common uh, way in which uh, people sustain more serious brain injuries, especially as a result of a car accident, where the brain is sitting inside of the skull, and the, the head is twisted on top of the spine, and you get, you get uh, some, some tearing of some of the nerves in the brain. And that tearing can actually result in long-term damage to the nerve, where actually the nerve starts to, to degenerate. And that, that specifically is, is called diffuse axonal injury, which is one of the, which is the patho, what's called the pathognomonic sign, or the most important sign that you see in uh, radiographically, like in an MRI or a CAT scan, of somebody who's had a serious brain injury. Let's uh, get one more phone call. Baltimore City, this is Jane. Uh, Jane, thanks for the call. Go ahead. Sure. Um, I was, um, my son sustained a head injury, and he was recommended to start on coconut oil straight away. Um, have you ever heard of anything like that? Jane, thank you. Coconut oil specifically I've not heard of, but there, but there are many different uh, home remedies that people use to treat. But I, the, the, unless they're really backed up by any hardcore research, you know, I can't really say one way or the other. Before we go, what's the, the takeaway here for uh, student athletes and, and their parents heading into the, the spring season? What do you want them to know? Uh, playing sports or engaging in physical activity is a good thing. Um, you just need to be aware that concussions and head injuries are very, very serious, need to be taken seriously. It's not a bump. It's not a ding, whatever you want to call it. It is a serious injury to the brain and needs to be followed up. Very good. John Belosky and uh, Dr. Rock Smith, thanks to both of you for being with us. Thank, Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System. 